future was anything but certain. These were the times that tested the courage of our convictions and the strength of our union. One year ago, I took office amid two wars, an economy rocked by a severe recession, a financial system on the verge of collapse, and a government deeply in debt. Experts from across the political spectrum warned that if we did not act, Angel, angel, come to me. Angel, angel, set me free. Hey, kiddo. I need you, and you need me. I want you to know that I've spoken with him, and he's never going to do that to you again. <laughs> you don't believe me. Do you believe that God writes a story for every soul that's ever born? I, I've never looked at it that way. Is that what you believe? I think God does. And how do you think your story ends? Like all good stories. With justice. Justice. But doesn't that assume that everyone has done something wrong? Something that they should pay for? Everybody's guilty of something, Doctor. Okay. Dear diary, is it my fault that I was born into the age of Instagramification? Oh, uh, yeah. That is hot. More of that, please. The age where our normal consists of projecting the most mundane moments of our day out to anyone who, for whatever reason they have, wants to see them, wants to keep up with our lives through the screen of their phone. My awesome brunch, the cool places I get to go, the fun to see people I get to party with, and it terrifies me. Give me that pouty lip thing that you do. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Which is why... Yeah, that's it right there. Without you, I would be lost. So Without hot. my unplugged sanctuary from this world that is wired for insanity, I would lose my mind. What's your comfort level showing some skin? What I can tell you is not for anyone, not my 117,000 followers or 2,341 friends, not creepy photographers. No, this is only for us. Okay. Oh, I think you got it. Seriously, if you're interested in doing some more artistic work sometime, Mm -hmm. The rate is much higher. And what is your idea of more artistic work? A series of black and whites that capture the true essence of the female form. It's very classy. What? <laughs> like, it's not like it's porn or anything. Yeah. Not interested. I'll post these next week. Great! Hey, if there are any standouts from this one, I'll make some prints. And if I do, I'll give you one. Sounds good. never called. Nice try. Okay. The other night, Whiskey Go-Go. You've got me confused with someone else, okay? You asked me for my number. Are you one of those girls who takes a guy's number and never calls him? Because <laughs> that's really messed up.
You don't remember me, do you? How wasted were you? What's up, crazy? Yeah, we really don't need to talk. Axel shit on the bed again. Oh, good boy. Oh, hi. Who wants to go for a walk? I think. Axel wants to go for a walk. Okay, go get your leash. Go get your leash. Yeah, good boy. Will you just shut up and get out of here already? Oh, everything will be out on Thursday. I'd appreciate it if you weren't here. I mean, if that isn't too much to ask now, is it? Much. You know, I really don't get you. That's funny, because I get you completely. So what, everything you said was bullshit? And what specifically are you referring to? <laughs> Don't you fucking play your mind games with me. Stand down. You're both sick. You and that mentally challenged dog. I'm glad to be done with the both of you. So how is your shoot? Oh, another rooftop. You are so the rooftop girl. Oh, yes, darling. It is so glamorous to live my life. I would kill to have your life. How sweet of you to say. So, who shot you? Oh, Kevin. Holy shit, he's got, like, literally over 9,800 followers. And he's still a creep. Well, can you hook me up with him? No, 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 trust me, you do not want to shoot with this guy. He's like, he's like the Harvey Weinstein of Instagram photographers. Yeah, but he's got, like, literally over 9,800 followers. Oh, my God, like, literally, or literally, literally? Can you please just invite him to your party? This would be great exposure for me. Wait, why don't you just cast a spell to get more followers? Ha ha, fuck you. Love you with all my heart. Love you more. Welcome to comparative religion. Or what you get a degree in when no religion you subscribe to would have you as a follower. <laughs> the Babylonian myth of human creation opens with the words E Numa E Lu A We Lay. Or when the gods were human, the language indicates a belief that a piece of the gods was also once present in humans. Humans. Similar to Adam and the J-Tex of the Old Testament, were made out of clay, which was then mixed with blood by the rebellious god of knowledge. Now, in that way, humans showed a divine gift of understanding and received something immortal. The spirit. What can I say? He's hot as fuck. Not hot like the guys my age think is hot. Not texting me, sup, and then expecting me to come over, give them a blowjob while they play a first-person shooter game hot. No, 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 no. I'm talking like old school hot. Like taking me out to a four-star restaurant, then taking me to the opera, taking me home, holding me down and choking me just the right amount as he keeps me safe forever. That kind of hot. You know, I would say I have daddy issues, but since I can't remember either one of my parents, what does it matter? Hi, Sarah. I'm auditing class. Um, so, wait. If the immortal spirit is man's soul, wouldn't that mean that our souls are actually foreign to our bodies? Well, suppose you could see it that way. Okay, and yeah. doesn't that mean that our entire... <laughs> Judeo-Christian society is actually built on the idea that some alien force is driving our bodies? I'm not sure I'll follow you. I'm asking if what you're saying is that our souls are in fact alien invaders. Sarah, I think you're auditing the wrong class. Advanced abnormal psychology is down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, Sarah brings up a valid point. What's the difference between a god infusing a piece of themselves into a human and demonic possession? Now, in many cultures around the world, possession states are part of normal cultural practice. These possession states become disorders when unwanted, cause distress or impairment, and are not accepted as part of a cultural 
or societal norm in one society. Okay, that's all we have time for today. For those of you who don't know her, this is Marie Clark, your extraordinarily brilliant and gifted TA. Get your papers to her by Thursday. Next week, we will explore plot similarities between the Sumerian epic Gilgamesh and the iconic James Bond, Dr. No. What does this have to do with comparative religion, you ask? Nothing. I just think it's cool they have the same plot. <laughs> Marie. Marie. Hey. Hey. You're moving into your new apartment this weekend, huh? You remembered. Yeah. <laughs> you all set? You need any help? Oh, no, trust me. You do not want to lug in my couch. <laughs> well, I've been known to lug up from couches in my day. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm good. My friend Richard is helping me out, too, and besides, I don't have that much stuff. Great. I am having a, a small party on Saturday. I mean, if you want to come, maybe give it your blessing. Hmm. Well, would you prefer a blessing from Anki or Enlil? Do you really need to ask? <laughs> <laughs> Anki. <laughs> well, I'll see you there. Your aunt was hostile towards you growing up, and you always felt that that was unfair. I don't mean to sound ungrateful. You know, Aunt, Aunt Rebecca was generous to take me in. She didn't have to do that. You know, everything was fine until... She blamed you for your uncle's death. Even though you had nothing to do with it. I mean, so do you, do you feel guilty about his death in any way? No. Just sad for Aunt Rebecca. I want to go back to your infatuation with your professor, this, um, uh, what was his name? Ah, Harris. Yes, ma'am. Infatuation? Well, I mean, have you acted on your desires with him? Yeah, no, no. So what, no, is that a, I can't quite know That's yes, a no? yes. No, 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 no I have, I... Sure, this is a no now. It's, it's a hard no. This no, is I... a no, okay. No, I haven't. <laughs> I got it. So now, are you going to? Can a schoolgirl just have a crush? Marie, I just want you to be careful with this relationship. I mean, there's something you're trying to, you're trying to explore from your past, and uh, your professor is giving you the lens. I just don't think that it's that healthy for you to go there. I'm done trying to remember my past. I'll never know what really happened, so I'm moving forward. Well, I think that is wonderful. Yeah, no, truly, I'm, I'm all good, I'm no, good. I believe you, I do, but I do. <sighs> Let the past live where it belongs. Mm. God knows you deserve it. You deserve to be happy. Hmm? I'm trying. Oh, I hope you know how much I love oh, you. Oh, like no other. Right, where's this going? Please pick going. Okay, okay, back, 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 back. Okay. Okay, I'm losing. I'm losing it. I'm losing it. Okay, right. okay, 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 okay. Here. Here for now, okay? I think it's for, great forever. Yeah. For no, for okay, for now. Oh. <sighs> where's Axel? Exploring the building. Right. I wish I could wander around the halls of any place I just moved into and claim any particular spots I wanted with a few drops of piss. <laughs> <laughs> How many is that? 118,216. Oh, 17. Fame whore. Uh, whatever, okay? Over 120,000 followers and I can pay off my student loans. Are you poor? Oh, I didn't know. <gasps> Help me, I'm poor. <laughs> I was born with a trust fund. Oh, I know. As I may have told you. Mm. Which means that from the age of two, I had a burned into my head that my sole purpose in life was not to lose 
the family fortune. Money's always been a burden for me, really. Wow. It must be so hard to be so rich. Yes. Plebs have no idea. Oh. Okay, give it back. Is this a diary? No, just give it back. Oh, how 20th okay, century. Okay, give it back. Me. Give it back. Dear diary. No, stop. I'd it's for me, okay? All right. Well, I guess. It's only for me. I won't touch it again. Ridiculous. You're ridiculous. Richard put his hands on you yesterday and I nearly ripped his goddamn head off. I think I might be overprotective of you. I, I have no idea what I would do without you. Am I becoming obsessed with you? No, okay. I'm gonna take Brighton's advice, find another outlet, and paying it forward by helping those who I'm not in as good a place as I am. Love is the name for our pursuit of wholeness, for our desire to be complete. According to Greek mythology, humans were originally created with four arms, four legs, and a head with two faces. Fearing their power, Zeus split them into two separate parts, condemning them to spend their lives in search of their... We'll pick it up here next week, yeah? Okay. Hey, 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 it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Hey, 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 Marie, Marie. Marie, Marie, wait a second. Marie. Strike me as having had a military background. Ah, you're perceptive. Huh? I was an intel for the 114. Ah, you? Mm. Me? No, I don't. Flat feet. Mm. <laughs> so, do you always party with your patients? <laughs> you uh, always party with your students? Alex, hi, hi. This uh, place looks great. Thank you so much for this, truly. You are a lifesaver. I'm sorry things worked out rough with Bobby. I did warn you, didn't I? You did, and you were right. But thank you for this, truly. I, I promise to be a good tenant. Well, you won't have to worry about anything here. What's this? Security cameras. You can actually see everything that goes on here on your phone whenever you want. You can watch me? Oh, God, no. No, you have control over everything. You just have to download the app and reset the password. Okay. You can alert the police, too, so they can see what's going on in here. I don't think that's going to be necessary, but good to know. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, so before you say anything, I just want you to know that I had nothing to do with Bobby finding out about this party. Mm -hmm. How to get my address? I don't know. Give me that. <gasps> Thanks. I'm sorry. And I love you. And I just had to come here as a man to tell you that to your face. And if you want me to turn away now and walk away for the rest of my life, just say the word and that's what I'll do. Walk away. Oh, come on, baby. Don't be like that. Look, I think it's time for you to go. You a watchmaker? Excuse me? 
Do you make watches? No. Then who the fuck are you to tell me when it's time for me to go? I don't want any trouble. You're damn right you don't want trouble. What you want to do is go walk away and keep on enjoying your fucking trouble-free existence. All right, all right, all right. That's enough. We're at a party, okay? <laughs> Gentlemen don't act like this at a party. Who the fuck are you? I'm Gregory Harris. Bobby D'Angelino. Can I ask you something, Bobby? You may. Were you born this much of an asshole, or did you just grow up that way? What the fuck did you just say to me? I said, get the fuck out of here. Now. You're crazy, man. You have no idea. You're all fucking nuts. You deserve whatever you got coming to you. Hi. Hey. hey. <laughs> Please meet my star pupil, Marie Clark. Hi. Marie, this is my wife, Amelia. How do you do? So nice to meet you. Gregory just can't stop talking about how wonderful you are. <laughs> so sorry you had to see that. I, I can't believe that's your first impression of me. Oh, please don't worry. My impression of you is just beginning to form. I need a drink. Made a new friend. Say hello. 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 <laughs> Come on, stop. Hurry up. So, what do you like to shoot on? What's the problem? The I don't understand what the problem is. You brought me to a college kegger I brought right you now. to my student's party. She invited me here. I don't understand what the problem is. Hi. I'm Marie. I know. Uh, do I know you? I'm a friend of Sarah's. Why are you holding my phone? Oh, is this yours? I didn't know. I was going to see who it belonged to. You know, it's not a good idea to leave those things lying around. I know all of Sarah's friends. You're not one of them. But how could you know all of them? Oh, you mean you're like Facebook friends with Sarah. So you don't actually know her. Do we ever actually know the people who are in our lives? Right. Mm. Mm, excuse me. Hey, Marie's had 10 parties, by the way. Hey, 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 oh, here, here, here. It's sus. It's sus. Who is that? Who? But, who are you talking about? Okay, he was just, he was just up Okay, do you not want me to become famous? What? Okay, because what? being photographed by Kevin is like a really huge deal, and I know it means nothing to you because you have like a million followers and you're so fucking perfect. Okay, I am time. not always but perfect. But to me, Exposure to 9,800 people would be huge. Amelia, serious? Look Sorry, at you. What am I supposed to be What do you mean? Okay. And you're smoking a cigarette. You're smoking. So disrespectful. What's. It really was a lovely party. I wish I didn't have to go. Oh, me too, but alas, you're cherry tops. Uber? Oh, Lyft! Oh, ho. What? Fold! Okay, okay, here we go. If I fall down your stairs and die, will you write me a beautiful oh, eulogy? Oh, that got dark. Wait! Okay, well, and we're sitting. And I'm English, we're darling. <laughs> Making any sense. Okay. Yes. But am I not theatre, darling? I mean, really. Forgot my bag.
There's nothing safe about my bed. There never will be. Alone at last. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me scare you. I thought you left. Well, I dropped Amelia off and came back. Why? I like being around you. I like being around you too. No, I mean, it's different. I mean, I like you. A lot. How about some water, yeah? Dear Marie, thank you for letting me sleep it off on your couch last night. Sorry for making an ass of myself. I hope you can forgive me, Maris. Fun as that sounds, I've actually got myself a date. You know, well, with a glass of wine and Freud's Moses, the Egyptian. Yeah, twice, and it gets funnier every time I read it. Okay, well, have fun with Umberto. Dear Marie, while you don't know me, I am writing to return what appears to be your diary? Since I cannot be absolutely sure it's yours, I found what I hope to be your address on a piece of paper in the back of the book. Prior to returning it over to its rightful owner, I thought it best to ask you a few pertinent questions. Please answer carefully because it could mean the difference between possession of this repository and first blush and very intimate thoughts and events that have happened over an extremely active life. And where did you meet so many interesting people? While I can only imagine how disconcerting it must be to realize you have possibly misplaced and then to learn, in fact, you have lost such a personal item, it would be 
inconceivable for me to comprehend a situation whereby someone other than yourself was in possession of these innermost thoughts. <laughs> this is some creepy shit. Yeah, yeah, tell me about it. Well, who do you think wrote it? I have no idea. Well, did you call the police? For what, a letter? <laughs> I'm sure they'll have them working in shifts. Valid. Can you do, like, a spell <laughs> and reveal who took it? Sweetie, it doesn't really work like that. Ugh. Okay, well, that sucks. So what did you say about me in it? Good things. Really? Only. Only good things. Yes, really only good. Can you not stress me out right now? I'll be right back. Okay. I am in a terrible dilemma. Being single as you are, I risk the possibility of alienating you to the point where nothing more than an exchange of a book will take place between us. For example, would I be better off using this diary as a means of meeting you? My prophet, you found her! What is this? Do you like it? He sounded so scared on the phone, I thought I should do something nice. She's for good things only. I'm telling you, she may look scary, but her purpose is to protect you. Hypothetically speaking, Let's suppose I never even brought up the subject of the diary, but instead decided to bump into you in a matter of speaking. Who would be the wiser? I could be very careful as to my demeanor, using subtlety and guile, never letting on what I know, but in fact, we would appear to have so much in common. You would marvel at how I anticipate your needs, your desires your fantasies. It crossed my mind more than once. Believe me. Fortunately, I believe in complete honesty. In fact, being honest not only with others, but also with oneself, is something I credit with allowing me to leave the hospital one year earlier than even the most optimistic doctors anticipated. But one can never be exact about such things. Signing off for now. Your angel. Does it still hurt? <gasps> Too soon? Too soon. Yeah, good. You deserve it. Just tell me this, all right? Mm. If mm. you really have some sort of psychopathic person slipping you love letters, why on heaven and earth would you leave your front door unlocked whilst you're in the loo? Oh! But I did lock it. And I, and I put the chain on. Well, then how did I get in? I have no idea. You're a ball of stress, darling. You really should carve out more time for relaxation and meditation. Maybe go back to your painting. I know. Come with me to my family villa next weekend. I've been dying to show you the place for ages. Yeah, it sounds nice. Or I could just get you a heavy bag for your birthday and be done with it. It's cheaper than plastic surgery. Oh, man, oh, <laughs> you're fine. That's the girl I love and adore. Hit it. Ah. Hello? Hey, what are you doing? Just painting. Oh, good. You're not doing anything. I need a favor. Okay. Kevin wants to shoot me, but only if you do it with me, too. No, I really don't want to shoot with Kevin again.
You have to do this for me. One hour, that's it. Oh, you are an angel. Too soon. Too soon. I love you more than life itself. Right. Cool. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, hold that. Love it. Hold it, hold it. Don't try as hard. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Marie, it's great. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, 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 hold that. Oh, it's great, it's great. Okay, I think we got it. Thank you so much, ladies. So when are you going to post these? Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know, but I'll definitely give you a heads up. Hey, Marie, do you have a second? We got some fantastic shots last time, and I made some prints. I'm going to submit one, and I would love to get your opinion on which one was your favorite. Cool. Where are they? Uh, yeah, I don't let anyone see prints until they get the subject's approval. It'll only take a minute if you want to hang out. No, that's okay. I have some glamorous plans I must attend to, darling. Oh, bummer. Oh, I will see you later at that thing. Don't be late. Kevin, I really have to go. Hey, hey, hey. Look, I promise, no funny business. I just want to give you some prints, okay? The prints, okay? That's it. What is this? <sighs> Do you have any idea how beautiful you are? Oh! <sighs> oh! God damn! Change your mind? Ah. Aunt Rebecca. Hi. Uh, it's your niece, uh, Marie. <laughs> uh, it would just be really great to see you. I am so, so sorry I'm late. I just, I just haven't been sleeping well lately. What's keeping you up at night? I lost my diary. <laughs> Maybe that's it. kept a diary? Guilty. What do you write about in your diary? Everything. Who do you think took it? I have no idea. But it's so good to see you. How are you? I'm lonely, Marie. I'm sorry I can't see you more. It's just between school and... It doesn't matter. Rebecca, can I ask you, can... Were my father and Uncle Carl alike in any way? Wow. We don't talk about the past, Marie. But I'm just trying to get a sense of... A, a sense. sense of what? Are you trying to find yourself? Hmm? Is that why you keep a diary? I wasn't trying to upset you. You are just like your mother. 
Savage. Savage. What are you... She killed your father, didn't she? You know I don't remember what happened. I thought I could do this, but I can't. No, Rebecca, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't... You know, there's a reason we don't talk about the past. It stirs things up. Don't you see you need me? Without me, you were just the helpless, scared little girl you always feared you would become. Fear not, for I am closer to you than you think. Now that I have your diary, I understand completely what you need. And I'm going to give it to you. I had to kill Kevin. You know I did. You are no one's commodity. What do you want from me? Everything's fine. Just a minute. Marie Clark? Yeah. Do you know this man? He wanted to give me some prints from our previous shoot. A lot of prints. You were plastered all over the studio. Yeah. It made me uncomfortable, so I left. Mm. With your friend Sarah? No, she left before. And what time was that exactly? I don't know, maybe 4.15, something like that. A little jumpy, aren't we? It's just a little shocking to hear that someone's dead. I mean, I can't pretend I, I like the guy. He's creepy as fuck, but I mean... No one, no one deserves that. Deserves what? To be murdered. Oh, not just murdered. Kevin Duncan was assassinated by a professional. A professional? We have reason to believe the killer has military training. So why did you leave, anyway? Were you afraid he was planning to take advantage of you, assault you? I don't know what he wanted. I just didn't want to be there. I didn't feel safe. So you have a lot of books on God. Yeah, I'm getting my master's in comparative religion. Huh. OCD, I gotta touch myself. I don't want to be rude, but it's been a pretty intense day. Do you need anything else from me, or are we done here? This was a severely brutal murder, Marie. Whoever did this is capable of a level of violence most people can't easily comprehend. So, for your own safety, I hope you're not keeping anything from us.
You might want to try doing it at the start of class instead of the end. What's wrong? I think I might be losing my mind. Well, generally, if you're asking whether or not you're going crazy, it's a pretty safe bet to say you're safe. And just because you're paranoid doesn't mean that they're all not out to get you. <laughs> you a drink. You can tell me about all your problems. Okay. No, you were right to not go to the cops. You'd only confirm the suspicions that you were involved somehow. Great. I mean, yes, I'm glad you agree with my instincts, but I mean, if I can't go to the cops, who can I, who can I trust? I have somebody that can help. What, like a PI? Yeah, you could say that. I see your aim's improved since the last time I beat you. Oh, have you developed amnesia? Because I remember whopping your ass the last time we played. Put your money on the table. Oh. Money on the table. Where was that the last time we played? Abu Dhabi. Ooh, the weapons convention. Yep. Uh, the time Keith almost blew our cover. That's the one. Uh, fucker still owes us for that one. He's this close to being strung up by his balls for the rest of his life. Where's he at now? The agency. That figures. Speaking of Owen Favors. Oh, what's her name again? Marie. Huh? Marie Clark. Marie Clark. Hey, brother, you all right? <laughs> Don't I look all right? This girl I told you about, the girl I told you to need your help, she's special. So if you're not up for this... Catching a stalker, that's easy. They always come to you. English, that's not what I'm talking about. They owe you one. They told you to take care of your student. It's not like that. She's in a fragile place right now. Now, I don't need you going up there at 11.30 and smelling like whiskey. You feel me? Do you really have to insult me? And playing that I'd stoop so low as to meet a new client for the first time. Drunk? I'm a fucking professional. A sugar coated for you, woman. I've seen things that have turned another man's nuts into raisins. I'm midway through a vicious divorce and I'm taken down to leader to Jameson tonight. My company is in serious danger of going down the shitter. Because. Because well, I was having an affair with my 22 year old assistant. And my wife caught us on tape. Oh, wow. But I'm really good at what I do. I can solve their problem for you. I see you've already KO'd the security cameras. Uh, strong Solutions. Wow, that's, that's quite a name for your company. Do you like it? Oh, yeah, I do. No, it's, it gives the impression that you have strong solutions for, for people's problems. Yes, love. That we do. 
Okay, yeah, so how, how does this work? You know, what do we, <laughs> what do we do first? Well, first, we find out who this person's been getting in and out of your apartment. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, you definitely want to have these locks changed. But there's no sign of forced entry in the apartment. Whoever's coming in here is a key. Yeah, but I put the chain on it. Just... Chains can be opened from the outside with a rubber band and a piece of tape. Put this under the door when you're here alone. It'll not keep an intruder out forever, but it'll, it'll slow them down long enough for you to get a suitable weapon. Do you have a gun? No, God, no, no. Well, you should get yourself one. Or at least a decent canister of pepper spray. And I'm going to need a list of everyone in your life who could have taken your diary. The good, the bad, and... Everyone in between. Okay, this is the list of their names. If you need anything. Our names are enough. You did it alphabetically. <laughs> yeah, that's just how my mind works, I guess. Impressive. Uh, so what do we do now? Now I find out who's been stalking you, and I'm gonna make them stop. <laughs> Robert D'Angelino. Never heard of him. I'm here to talk to you about a murder. Who died? Kevin Duncan. Never heard of him either. You sure about that? Because her ex-girlfriend was the last person to see him alive. What are you saying? Marie killed him? Maybe you killed him. <laughs> oh, I see. He fell for it, too. Fell for what? She plays it all cute and sweet, but that's not who she really is. <laughs> oh, no? Who is she, then? No shit. Get the fuck out of my Get the fuck away from her, do you hear me? Hmm? You hear me? Because if you come within a mile of Marie Clark ever again, I'll be coming back. And if I have to come back, we're not going to have as nice a chance as we're having now. Now, you boys make sure to enjoy the rest of your day. Life can be shorter than you think. Eight years of marriage. If she leaves without a word, a note, nothing. It's like she just vanished. I'm so sorry. Maybe she got bored. I mean, how many times can you hear a guy get drunk and rant about Amalekites before the novelty wears off? Amalekites. Amalekites. Well, I could listen to you rant about Abimelech and the Amalekites until David brings 200 foreskins to Saul. Dear God. You are perfect. Stop. Oh, seriously. You quote Maimonides. You have a million followers on the social media thing. You're kind, you're sweet, you're funny. Beautiful beyond words. <laughs> and you're fucking brilliant. You're going to make a major contribution with your research in I'm in Hell. So what gives? You must have a defect somewhere. I just can't for the life of me figure out what it is. Well, I do have a stalker. <laughs> There's that. Yeah. Mm. How are things working out with Angus? Yeah, how do you know him exactly? <laughs> we served together in a private company. What, like, first guys? Something like that. Look, it's best to keep it vague. You know, what's important is that you can trust him to look out for your best interest. Are you sure about that? Do you really think I would bring someone in your life you can't trust? 
And what about you, huh? Like, all of a sudden you're some G.I. Joe mercenary assassin? I collected intel when I was active. They had other people to, uh, do the killing. Just did it to pay for school. I'm retired from that life now. Hey. This is my life now. First temple split heaven and earth. What are you shine vote for a prince? What a hold from his pure canal. Oh my god, wow. I can't believe you got the university to acquire this. It must have it must have cost a fortune. Well, when I saw it was going for auction, I told the dean I'd quit if they didn't acquire it. You were ready to quit your job over this? Why? Well, I knew it would make you happy. Really? Really. Why are you here, Mr. McLaughlin? Well, between you and me, I'm just padding my books. Hmm? Looks good to the client when we meet with all potentially relevant people in person. They don't have an objective here, but... But since I am here, anything you can tell me about... You might be stalking or could be helpful. Does Marie have any enemies? Every beautiful girl has enemies. But does she have enemies capable of murder? Well, given the right circumstance, just about anyone, I think, is capable of murder. Isn't that your experience, Sergeant? Uh huh. Retired now. Oh, really? So why did you leave the Army? Oh, that's a long and boring story. You know, I really like the way you've decorated your office. Oh, thank you. Did you do it yourself or hire someone? What do they call them? Interior designers. Why, are you uh, looking for someone? Oh, uh... I don't think I could afford them. They must have a very successful practice. Yes, well, I, I do well enough. What's your hourly rate, if you don't mind me asking? My clients pay me by the month and get whatever time they need from me. How does Marie pay you for that? I mean, I'm doing a favor for a buddy because she made it clear she couldn't afford my rates. I want to make sure she's not taking me for a run, you know? Mistaking my generosity for stupidity and whatnot. Mr. McLaughlin, Marie survived a very traumatic childhood and has worked incredibly hard to get where she is today. And where is she today? Able to function as a normal, successful human being and with a very bright future. The fact that she is not completely immobilized by the trauma that she went through, that's nothing short of a miracle. Mr. McLaughlin. I didn't know. Yes, well, know this. I care deeply for Marie, as I do all of my patients. And I tell you, I do not appreciate a character such as yourself nosing about her business in your cavalier military fashion. So, if you will excuse me, I think we're done here. any devices with you. I'll control your social media. And within 48 hours, I'm gonna have whoever did this me to the fucking wall. Through the trailer. 
I was a trust fund kid. That's Trey. He's the groundskeeper. He looks after the place we're not here, which is most of the time. So it's a pretty good deal for him, actually. He's staying with us. I'll leave the shed, darling. I'll have to help okay, clean the house. So he doesn't have keys? Perfectly harmless. Took me full by his appearance. He's an absolute sweetheart. He's kind of a yogi in his own way. Oh, that is a Good to see you, Mr. Richard. Hello. Well, we're gonna head to that house is in perfect working order. I, I, I turned off the security system like you asked, so we won't have no problem with the police like last time. Thank you. Trey, this is my dear friend, Marie. Marie, this is Trey. Glad to know you, Miss Marie. Wait until I show you the view. Trey, darling, would you put the luggage away, please? Happy to, Mr. Richard. Thank you. Is the bar fully stocked? Oh, well, I knew it was you coming, so I'm going to let you answer that one for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Trey, you are a godsend. We do what we can, Mr. Richard. We do what we can. where I can see him and move over to the corner. Mm. Who sent you? That's an impressive piece of machinery you have there. Listen, you tell that piece of shit I've done everything he asked, right? He ain't got any reason to be doing this. What is it you think I'm here to do? <laughs> the fucker. I'm not here for the reasons you think I'm here. Uh, down on your knees. That's not gonna happen. What? I'm not getting down on my knees, and you're not gonna shoot me. You don't think so? No. You're not a killer. You don't know. Well, I know that you were the smartest kid in our class, and you had a natural ability for programming, but you had social anxieties too, and secretly felt that the other little fuckers were always laughing at you. Which, they were. Just put down a gun, son. I'm only here to talk. <laughs> Why are you monitoring Marty Clark? I, I don't know what. Yeah, wait, wait, come on, man. I, I... My friend's dead now. So if you don't start giving me answers, I'm gonna blow that pretty little head of yours all over that axe there. Did you hear me? Look, I'm telling you, man, I don't know shit. They don't tell me shit, okay? Oh. They. Mm. Ah, they's a start. Ah. Who's they? Hmm? No. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, listen. All right. 
Hey, I met a guy at the party. He offered me a lot of dough. Huh. And he set me up as her boyfriend's roommate when she moved out to monitor her, okay? So I hacked into her shit. To do what? Just to fuck with her. To fuck with her how? Just to fuck with her head and stuff, like, like she, make her paranoid, like she's growing crazy. Who was the guy? I don't know, man. He paid me cash. I never heard from him again. Well, if he paid you up front and you never saw the guy again, why'd you just pocket the money and leave the poor girl alone? Because this isn't the kind of guy you want to piss off. What do you mean? He's like evil. Okay, he's like into some real dark shit. Here are your quarters. It's a bit musky. Grandmother had an obsession with dolls. This is just the tip of the iceberg. You should see the attic. Creepy dolls. Perfect. Well, it's no point hiding it from you. They can walk and talk. And then they have sex. Okay, okay, okay. You really are insane. You know this, right? You know, one time, I found a particularly randy and lead doll on top of one of my cans. Knickers over her head. We should really just throw them in a bin and be done with it. But since it would break mother's heart to do such a cruel and heartless thing. Find you another room. Oh, uh, no, no, Richard, this is. This is wonderful. Thank you. Come, come. None of that. We're on holiday. You don't need to get all emotional and, you know, take time away from more important things, like getting properly legless. How about a nice cup of pins? Sounds lovely, doesn't it? Yeah. Lovely. <laughs> you took custody of your niece when she was how old? Fifteen. She was fifteen when my brother died. How long was it then before you checked her into the hospital? How do you know about that? With all due respect, it's my job to know everything about Marie. What else do you think you know? What else are you afraid I know? I think I'd like you to leave now. Rebecca, I want you to look at me. You've been carrying an immense weight on your shoulders. And I can remove that weight for you. Now, I want you to understand that what happened isn't your fault. You were just doing what you felt you had to do. Yes. Can you trust me, Rebecca? <laughs> now talk me through the order of events until the day you put her in the hospital. to see Dr. Kellogg. 
Remember, we don't talk about the past. To anyone. Oh, don't look so scared, Marie. This place is not as bad as all that. Now, let me show you to your new bedroom. Mary? Can I help you? That's a very pretty pin you have on there. Thank you. Did you make it yourself? Well, yes. <laughs> I actually did. I thought so. It has that one-of-a-kind feel to it. Well, how, how can I help you? Well, I was hoping you could let me take a look at a file for a former patient. So Marie had two primary doctors. First, Kellogg, then Brayton. Yes, that's correct. Is Dr. Kellogg still here? Dr. Kellogg was murdered in the parking lot two weeks ago. He was stabbed to death. It looks like your client was part of a program called Alter. Alter? Alter was part of a post-9-11 experimental project, Blitz, when they were given the green light to just about anything. And what can you tell me about it? It was started by an outside contractor. It was a program for developing unwitting assassins. Mm. Why was it abandoned? They found out he was using a mental patient as a uh, test subject. Shut it down quick. Mm. That's all I got. I know what you're risking by giving me this, Keith. Oh. I don't think it goes unappreciated. Well, you find this motherfucker that I did this to Harris. And you do to him what I wish I could. You sleep all right last night, Miss Marie? Uh, I did. Thank you. You ain't from around here, are you? Uh, no. I'm not. I mean, yeah, no, not originally. That's like me. I ain't from around here originally, neither. But you ain't a, uh, open gate motherfucker, are you? Excuse me? It, 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 it's just there's, there's three kinds of people in this world. You got your open gate motherfuckers, your closed gate motherfuckers, and your locked gate motherfuckers. <laughs> now, what's your, what's your open gate motherfucker saying to you? Well, he's, he's, he, he's saying, my gate is open. What's mine is yours. You can come take my shit. And if you're foolish enough to leave your gate open, I'm going to take your shit. But then you got your lock gate, motherfucker. Now, now what they saying? They saying, my shit is valuable. I don't want you to take my shit. Well, if you think some little old rinky-dink motherfucking lock gonna keep me out, I'm definitely gonna take your shit. And finally, you got your clothes gate, motherfuckers. Now, what they saying, what they saying is my shit is valuable. I don't want you to take it. But I don't need no motherfucking rinky-dink lock to keep you out now. You ain't gonna touch my shit. Cause you know I'm such a bad motherfucker. <laughs> so, uh, the moral of the story is? Uh, always, always be a closed gate motherfucker. Closed gate motherfucker. Oh, keep that in mind. You have yourself a Thanks. nice run now, Miss Marie. I appreciate you taking the time to see me again. Well, I must say, I was curious when you <laughs> contacted me again. Oh, thank you. <sighs> <sighs> Hot. Well, now, you said you needed my uh, expert opinion on a, a different case that you're working on? A runaway. Uh, parents are terrified because the daughter suffers from multiple personality disorder. 
trying to get a good sense of what life's like for someone with this disorder, so we can figure out where to begin. Do you think you can help me? Well, the disorder you're referring to is dissociative identity disorder, which just happens to be my specialty. I think you know that. That's why I came to you first. I always start with the best. So what would you uh, like to know? Well, is it like it is in the movies, with one personality being normal and the other a uh, brutal psycho? No, 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 no. How so? Well, it doesn't make it any easier on the DID community that movies only portray them as monsters whose alters commit these violent, evil deeds. I'm sorry, dude. What did you say? That, 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 uh, alters? Oh, so I'm sorry. We refer to the dominant identity as the host. And all the other identities, the one the patient creates to protect themselves from whatever trauma that they, that they went through, those are called alters. What type of trauma? Childhood trauma. The worst part is I knew. I knew the whole time that I convinced myself I was crazy. You convinced me I was crazy. You sick gaslighting fuck! You're out of your mind. She told me, Mary! She told me. She's a child. A child with an active imagination, that's all. Oh, I let this happen. Oh, please, God, send me an angel. Oh, my God. An angel to protect me always. Here you go again. I can't eat. Well, all the times that, you know, she fell down, all the times that she had the bruises. You need to calm down. No. You're going to give yourself a seizure. You hurt her! You hurt her! You said it! You hurt her! Please, God, send me an angel. An angel who will protect me. Please, God, send me, send me an angel. You've been a bad girl, Marie. Let the past live where it belongs. You deserve to be happy. You know, there's a reason we don't talk about the past. It stirs things up. Hi. You don't remember me, do you? How wasted were you?
Fix me a drink, Angel. child manifests an altar to endure the pain that's been inflicted on them so they can survive it. So they can pretend that it's happening to someone else or there's someone else there to protect them. And so the violence makes them violent? No, 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 no. The vast majority of those afflicted with DID do not have altars who commit violent acts. But they are still, all of them, they are beholden to the same basic tenets as the host. So could someone hypnotize an altar without the host being aware of it? Well, <laughs> control that altar. Well, they would have to, uh, they would have to be an exceptional hypnotist. Could you do it? Why would I want to? I don't know. Why did you do it to Marie? I beg your pardon? Was it to get a government contract to fund your work? In exchange for creating the most lethal kind of assassin. What kind of assassin is that? The unknowing kind. You're the one who's been terrorizing Marie, trying to drive her crazy so you can pin the, the murders on her. How many people have you made her kill? Well, I really can't recall. Yeah, well, you don't know this yet, but you really fucked up. Oh. And you murdered my friend. Oh, I did. <laughs> but now you see, your friend Harris, he just, ooh, he just simply got in the way. I mean, he encouraged her to ask the wrong questions, and he introduced her to you. Hmm? <laughs> Tell me, how does it feel to know that you're the reason that your friend is dead? No. You're ready. Angel, angel, come to me. Angel, angel, set me free. I need you, and you need me. My angel, for Eternity. When are you going to give it back to her? You said it would be helpful to read her diary to know her inner thoughts. 
you didn't say you were going to keep it. I mean, really. She's gone to pieces. And what on God's green earth were you doing sending her letters? How was that therapeutic? Oh, my boy. How little you understand about the abnormal mind. No, 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 it's a good thing that you were so cute. Otherwise, I might not keep you around. <laughs> no, no, come on, no, no. I missed you. Did you? I'm in the mood for a Pimm's Cup. Would you be a darling and slice the cucumbers for me? With pleasure. Come on, where is she? <sighs> okay, here she is. Oh, just in time, I was beginning to get worried. What are you doing here? Came to explain. Explain what? Explain what? Oh, suit yourself. Oh, this is a marvelous vintage. You know, one thing you can say for Richard, he knows a good red when he sees one. Mm. <sighs> Why are you here? I can only help you if you trust me. Now, you do trust me, don't you, Mary? Of course, yeah. Good, that's very good. Because I'm gonna give you what you always wanted. I'm gonna tell you what happened to you. After Jane killed your uncle, your Aunt Rebecca checked you into the hospital. That's when I found you. And I loved you both equally. Jane wanted to become the perfect assassin. Jane liked killing people. Marie loved studying ancient cultures and religions. But with Jane, there was money to be made. When the government proved unreliable, it became evident that we would have to find more creative ways to finance our work. That's when I perfected the trigger. Something that would make Jane come out to protect you on cue. And that's when Jane and I went into business together. And I must say, we had one hell of a good run, my dear. 
I mean, we, <laughs> we could have gone on forever. And you know, nobody would have been the wiser. My colleague Kellogg had no idea he was my first guinea pig. But unfortunately for him, he got a visit from the agency. Experimental surgery? Are you out of your mind? And was stupid enough to tell me about it. That could have been the end of it. But Marie had to have her schoolgirl crush on her professor. And that's when all the trouble began. Harris had to go. No question about it. But I'm not a monster. I did that one myself. For you. Oh! What do we have here? You know the problem with men like you? You always think you're smarter than the woman you're talking to. <laughs> Marie. Stupid. You see? We're one, Doctor. And what Jane and I do, we do because we have to. Oh, Marie, Marie, I want you to listen to me. I bet you have a small deck. Marie, everything I did, I did it for you. Take it out. What? I'll take out your dick. Marie, Marie, I want you to look at me. Are you going to make us cut it off so we can measure it for ourselves? Please. Like we thought. Tiny. Put it away now. I find the sight depressing and we're not going to be depressed please, please, anymore. Please, please listen to reason. No! Uh, Once uh, you are going to shut up no, and listen okay, to okay, me. Okay, 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 okay. I'm listening. Just, but just be calm, stay calm. Don't uh, tell us what to do. I'm sorry, just please don't hurt me. Just please, please don't hurt me. God writes a story for each and every single one of us, Doctor. Don't you remember? You kill for pleasure. And God punishes those who take their pleasure in other people's pain. And now it's your time for your story to end, Doctor. Oh, you, you are not as smart as you think you are, sweetie. Oh, no. <laughs> think that I would turn you into a killing machine without certain safety measures. Hmm? <laughs> uh, only a fool creates a monster without embedding an off switch in it. Hmm? Oh, now this is a pity. Don't you see how I care for you, Marie? The plan was for you to spend the rest of your life in a nice, clean facility for killing Kevin. Now, and you, you humiliated me. And now, I'm going to make you suffer for it. You know, 
It really is just you Tyler Dick Lockgate motherfuckers give the rest of us men a bad name. And your time is up. You all right? Yeah. Thank you. Richard? Dear? Just for my own edification. To whom do I have the privilege of addressing at the moment? We're going to get along just fine. Once you've had a violent stalker penetrate your life, you will not be the same. The paranoia, it never goes away. Not a day goes by when I do not think of Bryden and all of the people he murdered. I think about how he was almost the end of my life, my story. And there are still times when I feel paralyzed with fear. But then I remind myself that what Bryden did to me, what anyone does to you, it's not the end of your story. It's just the beginning. Thank you. Any of y'all have any questions for Miss Miller? You, right here. Hi. Hi. So now that you've come forth with your story, I mean, you've revealed so much. I, I feel like I know you. Um, your writing is so uh, natural and, and mature. I just, I, I wonder, putting yourself out there like this, I mean, do you think that you're opening yourself up to other stalkers coming after you? For their sake, we hope not. Just a camp. 